Welcome folks, my name is Martin Jones and this is the LSBF. This is the London School of Business and Finance and Interactive is the product that uh, is communicating with you now. And the subject matter for this presentation is uh, P2. In particular, um, as hopefully you can see just behind you, um, these, the thing that I'm going to be recording over 10 steps is how to answer a P2 exam, a question in 10 easy steps. Well, um, hmm, uh, P2 exam, easy. Those are phrases that do not sit terribly well together. Um, I would argue there is nothing easy about the P2 exam. So I'm going to struggle a little bit to make this easy, but what I will attempt to do uh, during this recording um, is show you uh, some of the, the, the basic ideas that you can use in communicating your knowledge of P2 to the examiner to try and maximise the number of marks. I'm not really sure that I'm going to make P2 easy, um, but hopefully I will make it easier. And the way that I'm going to make P2 easier is by working my way through an exam question. And if I can click to the next slide now. Um, the question that I am going to utilise over these 10 steps is uh, a wonderful question called Kate. And hopefully you can see on the, uh, on, on the screen behind me uh, reference to the exam uh, P2 June 2010. Uh, the question Kate, with that funny spelling with the C, um, was positioned as question two in June 2010. And what I'd like you to do is to go to the ACCA website and download that question. I've actually downloaded my copy and it's just down here. So I've got mine all already. Um, before I click to the next slide, I just want to tell you a little bit about how the exam is constructed. Um, the P2 examination is made up of an A section and a B section. The A section is question one, and question one is groups. And then there's question two, three, and four in the B section. Two, three, four is the B section, and in the B section you choose two from the three. Now, uh, the examiner um, allows himself freedom in the way that he constructs his B section, but he does pretty much always have three particular styles of question in the B section. And those three particular styles are the mix question, the focus question, and the current issues question. The current issues question, as I mentioned, uh, as you can imagine, the current issues question, as you can imagine, is current issues. The focus question focuses on a single international financial reporting standard, uh, normally one of the harder ones. And the mix question does a mixture of different subjects um, all the way from the easy stuff like basic group accounting all the way up to the rocket science like financial instruments. The question that I've chosen is a past mix question. Kate is a mix question. So what I'm going to show you, I'm, hopefully I'm going to show you a feel for how to answer the whole of the B section because the style of answering in the whole of the B section is, is consistent. But what particularly I'm going to help you with is how to do mixed questions. Okay? So how am I going to tell you how to do mixed questions? How am I going to tell you how to answer the question, Kate? Well, as you can see, I've got a, a pretty simple approach that I'm going to use. Uh, this video now is, is the first uh, recording, and I'm going to record very briefly about question approach. And then, as you can see, over the next eight recordings, I'm basically going to break the question down uh, do part A, knowledge, and then part A, the answer itself, and then work my way through in that way. So it's going to go uh, knowledge, answer, knowledge, answer, knowledge, answer, knowledge, answer, knowledge, answer, done. Okay, so that's the plan. Now you've guessed already that this mixed question has four parts. It's got A, B, C, and D, 
And that's pretty typical of a mixed question. They sometimes don't have four parts, they sometimes have three parts, but they almost always have four parts. So it works quite nicely if I can uh, show you how to answer this question by doing part A first and working my way to part D. So that's that, that's the plan. And now I'm going to talk about the actual question approach itself. And the way that I'm going to talk about the question approach itself is by drawing your attention to the requirement. Now, um, I guess at some stage, maybe you've done it already, but at some stage you're going to go to the ACCA website and you're going to um, download the exam question. And when you download the exam question, you will see that it has a requirement. And here is the requirement here. So the requirement that the examiner Graham Holt required in the context of this mixed question was frankly exactly the same as the one that he always requires. He basically tells you a story, usually in four parts, and then he simply says, discuss. Let's actually have a look at the actual requirement. It says, discuss whether the accounting treatments proposed by the company are acceptable under international financial reporting standards. Um, usually the answer is, no, they're not acceptable because of this. In fact, the company should be doing that. It's pretty much the way it works, technically. And professional marks will be awarded in this question for clarity and quality of discussion. The mark allocation is shown against each of the four parts above. Now, maybe you haven't printed off the four parts above as yet. Maybe you have it in front of you, maybe you don't. But I can tell you part A is five marks. And what that basically means is, here is a little story and here is five marks. You can say anything you like when you are answering part A, providing it discusses what is going on in part A. The exact structure that you would use to answer your question would be down to you. But what you must communicate is at least five individual ideas. To communicate those five ideas, we're going to use a, a heading sentence approach. And that's the approach that I will continue to use uh, throughout the whole of this presentation. Uh, so it'll go idea in a heading and then sentence. And then another idea in a heading and then sentence. Heading, sentence, heading, sentence, till you've got at least five. Now, five is really the minimum, to be honest with you. You have 1.8 minutes per mark. You have 1.8 minutes per mark. Five marks gives you nine minutes. So ideally, if you can give six or seven ideas within those nine minutes, that would be even better. But the minimum is one idea per mark that the examiner gives you in the requirement. Okay? So that's the approach that I'm going to use when answering this question. Um, go to the ACCA website now. Have a look at the question, Kate. See what you make of it. See how you think you should be answering it. And the next presentation that I will give, I will start to talk in more detail about Kate itself. Okay, there we go.